this video has become a bit of a rabbit hole. Uh, genuinely, possibly one of the videos I've enjoyed most ever uh, in terms of making it and exploring it. We're going to take a look at this unassuming light band. I have actually already filmed a lot of this video, um, so doing the intro after the fact because the original intro didn't really fit anymore <laughs> after we went so far down. This video was just going to be looking at this, uh, taking it apart, seeing what makes it tick, uh, but we went a lot further than that. So I picked this up uh, at the Taylor Swift concert that we went to a few weeks ago. If you've been following the channel, you'll have seen the video on that. Uh, but they had these light bands that uh, I've definitely seen at other concerts as well. But basically, they synchronized across the whole crowd. So you've got these amazing light effects across the whole audience. Uh, and that was incredibly impressive. So naturally, I kept it because I wanted to know what makes this thing work. How are these being controlled? Are they pre-programmed? Is there some sort of wireless control mechanism. Uh, if you look closely, I'm not sure the camera is going to pick it up, but if you look closely, you can see two dots where the LEDs are and a third blacker dot in the middle um, where the plastic seems to thin out. So there's some sort of something in there. Uh, yeah, so we're going to start by cracking this thing open and taking a look at it, and then we're going to see what we can actually do with it. have a bit of a closer look at the band itself. It's got a nice material band on a kind of plastic container and as you can see better here you have very clearly got the two RGB LEDs and then this thing here. So there's definitely something in there uh, but uh, there is a company name on the back, PixMob. It's got some batteries in it. They're gonna probably be, well it looks like it is, the button batteries. But that's about all the information we have and it's made in China. So I believe this quite easily pops off like that. And then you've got the separate strap. And then looking at this, it looks like there's some more clips around the edge to, and then there's a hinge here to get this whole thing open. So let's get that done and see what's inside. Okay, so I've managed to get it open now. And as I thought, yep, a couple of button batteries that are kind of very normal uh, CR2032 size, so those are dead, we will need to replace those. Uh, and then we've got a little rocker to make a connection between the two batteries and this pad here, which I'm guessing, let's see if I can get it out. Some time later. Which I'm guessing is the, yep, the actual board itself. So here we go. This is the version of the PixMob that we have. It's the Palm V2.6R1, designed with love in Montreal. Uh, and yeah, I, it's pretty simple really. I actually really like the use of the two big power uh, plates on the back. And then you've just got your two LEDs here, which are both RGB LEDs. You've got this, which I reckon is an RF receiver by the looks of it. And then you've got a chip, which I'm going to say is probably the control chip, and a couple of resistors and other things just to regulate everything. So that's all it is, really. So this is very interesting. It's quite a cool, tiny little board. It's all very modular. So this all comes out of the plastic. Even this bit of metal, I think, just pops out as well. So this could be uh, sanitized or even replaced if needed. And uh, the actual hardware is completely then reusable. So I really like this design. It's entirely accessible without breaking anything. So yeah, it's actually kind of recyclable. I really like that. So we're gonna look this company up. We're gonna see if we can find anything online. I'm wondering if somewhere they've got like data sheets on the signals used or any information that might be useful to actually reuse this thing. Let's check it out. 
So having discovered what the chip actually is and the board and, you know, we have a maker name now as well, I thought I'd take a little look online and see what we can find in terms of more information about this thing. Now, PixMob, the company, they have a website giving you lots of information about the product, but really, obviously, they're there to sell you this kind of whole setup for your concerts and events. Uh, so there's not a lot on here that's going to give you any kind of information in terms of uh, like how the, it works, what the board is, and you know the the details because those are the things that really they're selling. So did bit did a bit more googling and I found this project on GitHub. Uh, this uh, PixMob IR reverse engineering. And this is where we started to go down a bit of a rabbit hole. This is fascinating. Basically, uh, this is a company, PixMob, have been around for quite a while now. And they've definitely got lots of different kind of iterations. But fundamentally, the product has always been the same. Uh, very much like we saw on the board, you have some sort of IR receiver and then some sort of array of LEDs and a controller that tells the LEDs to flash which color and in what uh, pattern. So this project set about reverse engineering those frequencies so that you could actually send the frequency to the device and program it yourself and have a light show made by you, really. Uh, and it's an absolutely fascinating kind of community that's built around this. People have been taking flipper zeros to concerts and recording the incoming uh, IR signals so that you decompile that and reverse engineer these different signals with these different effects. So <laughs> it's just really cool to see. And uh, it, the project itself goes on much further to actually give you code that you need to be able to run this yourself. You can either use a Flippo Zero to uh, transmit the IRS, RF signals, or you could use some sort of Adreno compatible microcontroller and an actual I IR admitter. And um, that's what I've just gone ahead and done. So let's take a look at that. Let's take a look at this software and uh, see what we can do. I have bought uh, Adreno uh, what is this? The Uno R4 Wi-Fi for this project. Um, the only microcontrollers I had were Raspberry Pi versions, which were three volt, not five volt. And the recommended IR transmitter was a five volt. So I thought, why not? Let's get one of these. I think this was about twenty-five pounds on Amazon. It was in stock. It came next day. So this was the one that I went with. That's the only real reason. Uh, but it definitely has everything we need to kind of make this work. It does also have this really cool LED like matrix display as well, which is kind of cool. So I feel like this is definitely something we'll use in the future. Um, actually, if you know of any fun projects that use this kind of platform, I would love to hear about them. I definitely want to get into more into this. It's a lot of fun. Um, and I quite like that it's mounted on a piece of plastic as well. It feels a bit more strengthened um, compared to it just being the board. Uh, so I got that. And then I also picked up this little IR transmitter board. Um, you obviously could just get the infrared LED and do it manually. But I was kind of a fan of this for a couple of reasons. A, that it, it comes with the resistors built into the board. So you haven't got to also have some resistors to, to control the uh, LED. But it does also have a I think that's like a red LED focus um, down the bottom there, where which is kind of visible light. So you'll be able to see when this thing is functioning uh, visibly without having to use a camera or something. So I like that as well. It was just seemed like quite a nice little package. It, it was about five pounds again on Amazon. And it also came with a receiver as well, a receiver board. We don't need that for this, but it was there. So let's get this all wired up and plug it into the computer. Okay, so this is what we're working with. We've got our five volt rail, we've got ground, and then we've got our control rail going into four. So let's plug this in and see how we get on. So we plug it in here and there we go. 
Um, so we've also then got our thing. I've got a couple of new button batteries to make use of. So we will pop those in there and that can then basically go back together. Uh, well, we can leave that on there and we can press it down to, to test. So let's now have a look at the software side. So this open source project that we found that includes basically everything that we're going to need. If we head over into um, the Adreno IDE and we're all set up and connected, we have this uh, little program that needs to be loaded onto the board itself, which is basically taking in uh, incoming information over serial and then sending it out on the transmitter. That's all that the code that needs to run on the actual thing is doing. And then it's a Python script on the computer. That is where you actually select what pattern you want to run and all that sort of information. So we'll upload that to our Adreno and get that all set up. And then we need to head over to Python. So in here we have a couple of different demo kind of um, projects already set up for us. We have this uh, demo single effect, which I think is probably going to be the uh, best way to start. So that didn't seem to work, but I think it's partly me just holding this thing badly. So let's um, get it. Let's get it back into situ and put it back together and see if we can get it working that way. I think that's going to just be a better project. So if we just clip that all back together. Now that's in there. That can kind of sit there and hopefully be received. Let's try set it up like that. Okay, let's run through the demo again. Uh, hey, look at that. Okay, so some of them are working, but not all of them. Let's try this demo multi effect advanced. Okay, there we go. So that's it flashing red. And then it goes to green. I don't know how well that's showing up on this. Oh, there we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's working. There's the blue. Turquoise doesn't seem to work, but that, you know, that's okay. We can't win them all, uh, and this is what this would boil down to, is a lot of trial and error to figure out which colour effects and what have you do work in this scenario. But still, we've got it listening to our little program, and it lights up. That is so cool. So with a little bit of electronics, we have been able to completely recontrol this and uh, actually repurpose it, and we will... I, I don't know. I've just really enjoyed doing this. It's been a really fun little project for me. It's amazing. I'm very impressed. So there you have it. A bit of a different video. Uh, I've absolutely enjoyed it. I've never really been too involved in hardware hacking in general. Uh, I didn't have an Adreno to start with. So uh, I've really enjoyed doing this. It's been a fun little project that's actually been quite easy to follow on. It's very well documented. Uh, and uh, it's kind of a cool thing. Not only, you know, has it been fun, but it does mean that this hardware remains useful to me. I will give them credit that actually at the event they had recycle bins that you could put them in and the nature of how this particular one is designed, it all comes apart, it can all be cleaned and it can all be reused. So that's a really great conscious thought from them. But, you know, for me personally, I wanted to take it away and I wanted to see if I could do something with it. So it's great that I can actually do that as well. Uh, I'm sure I will come up with some use for some sort of notification light or something kind of cool like that. Um, even if uh, it is a little unnecessary with the, having to send the RF signals, I kind of enjoy it. It's kind of a bit strange and fun. But anyway, let's wrap it up there. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Um, and if you have, please do make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. We're still a very small channel at time of recording. We're about 740 subscribers. So if you have made it all the way through the video, please, please, please do hit that subscribe button. Thank you very much. And I'll see you again very soon. Bye for now.